Hello engineers, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to discuss facial recognition system using a deep learning technique called Siamese networks. Before starting, in the previous video, I asked the quiz question, what is the difference between a generative and a discriminative network? Chirag got that answer right. After training, a discriminative model is used to make predictions on a given unseen data. It can be used for either classification or regression. Whereas generative models are used to generate new data based on the probability learned from the training data set. All right, so the question for this video is, what is the name of the classification task where in training we are only given a single example for each of the class? You can find the answer to this question either from the video itself or searching on the internet. And you can type your answer in the comment section below. All right, so now let us discuss the technical details of the facial recognition problem and Siamese networks. Okay, so the problem we are going to discuss is similarity learning. And we are going to solve the similarity learning using Siamese networks. In the problem of similarity learning, given different input images, we are required to predict how much similar and how much dissimilar are the given different input images. This can be done by predicting a similarity score that having a lower value would suggest that two objects are dissimilar to each other and having a higher value would suggest that two objects or images are similar to each other. There are various interesting applications of this problem of similarity learning. The one we are discussing in this video is facial recognition. Another interesting application would be in e-commerce. For example, Amazon would be required to sort different products that it has into separate different classes based on images. Using similarity learning, given different images of the different products, Amazon can determine which different products are similar to each other and categorize them into a single category and as well develop different categories for different objects based on images. One such example can be seen over here. We have two different types of shoes which are of different colors. Now we can see that these two shoes are pretty similar to each other and these two shoes are not well that similar to each other. However, this last pair of shoes are similar to each other. The only difference between them is in their color. Hence, the task of similarity learning is to develop applications that can tell how much similarity exists between two different objects. A pretty much related concept to similarity learning is of few short learning. For example, in our facial recognition system, it is quite evident that we would not have a large data set of different images of different people. At max for a single person, we can have 10 to 20 different images. One particular application of the face recognition system is of a face attendance system, wherein a person can log into the system using just his facial photo, which can be taken through a live feed webcam. Creating a large scale database for such an application like hundred to thousands of images for a single person would be quite time consuming and tedious to do. Hence, we require a network that can learn to recognize faces only given a few number of images. This problem of learning from a small data set with few number of images is called few short learning. Not all applications of similarity learning would also need to deal with this problem. However, our project, the facial recognition system needs to deal with this problem. So these are the two main problems that we are dealing with in this particular video. Now let us discuss a technique to handle these two problems called Siamese networks. Siamese networks can also be called sister networks. The term Siamese comes from the medical condition wherein two newborn babies are physically joined to each other. These two twin brothers or sisters are also called Siamese twins. As the word morphology suggests, 
we are required to use two or more than two networks to build up this particular architecture. So let's see what constitutes this architecture. Now this particular architecture over here is an example of a Siamese network. Instead of a single input, here we are required to give two or more than two inputs to two or more than two neural networks. For instance, in this case, we are giving two inputs to the two different neural networks. Now these two neural networks are an exact replica of each other. They have the same architecture as well as their parameter weights. As a first step, these two inputs are passed to these convolutional neural networks. Then the output is passed to a separate layer called the difference layer. This difference layer calculates some form of distance metric between those two output images. This difference can then be passed on to an activation function like sigmoid then that sigmoid can output the final similarity score. Now the two convolution neural networks can be any arbitrary CNNs. These two networks can be custom CNNs or they can be the popular image classification networks like ResNet or VGGNet. Intuitively, the networks over here try to learn an embedding that maps from the input image dataset to some latent representation. This latent representation is in a form of a vector which can then be compared using any distance metric like cosine similarity or Euclidean distance. Now given two of these embedding vectors, they can be compared using the distance metric in their vector space and their similarity can be output from that distance metric. In a 2D vector space, that would mean that these two vectors are quite dissimilar to each other as their Euclidean distance is quite far off. However, these two vectors are going to be pretty similar to each other as their Euclidean distance is quite small. Now there are various different techniques that are used to train these Siamese networks. These techniques differ based on their loss functions and the number of inputs that we provide. In the cross entropy and contrastive loss, we provide two inputs. In the case of triplet loss, we provide three inputs and in the case of quadruplet loss, we provide four inputs. The cross entropy and the contrastive loss methods are kind of similar to each other. Herein, apart from the input image pair, we also provide a label while training the network. This label assumes a value of 1 if the images are similar to each other and assumes a value of 0 if the images are dissimilar to each other. The main difference is in the calculation of the loss function. The cross entropy loss is mainly used in the image classification task. Therein, we use the cross entropy loss to tell the network what particular class that image belongs to. Using a cross entropy loss, we treat this problem of similarity learning as an image classification problem. Given two images, do they belong to the similar category or given two images, do they belong to the dissimilar category? We train the networks using cross entropy loss using this particular method. Mathematically, the cross entropy loss makes use of a log function. The contrastive loss works in a different manner. Given two images, if they are similar to each other, then the contrastive loss function would encourage the network to reduce the learnt distance that is between them. However, if the images are dissimilar to each other, then the contrastive loss would encourage the network to maximize the distance between those two data points. In the triplet loss, we use three input images. The first image that we pass to the network is also called the anchor image. The second image is a similar image to the anchor image, which is called the positive image. And the third image is a dissimilar form of the anchor image, also called the negative image. The triplet loss works similar to the contrastive loss. The triplet loss would encourage the network to reduce the distance between the similar images, the anchor and the positive image, 
and it would try to increase the distance between the anchor image and the negative image. The triplet loss would encourage the network to learn such weights that accomplish this task. In the quadruplet loss function, we provide four input images to the network. Similar to the triplet loss, we provide the network with the anchor image, the positive image and the negative image. In addition to that, we also provide an image that is dissimilar to all the above three images. The learning behavior is also similar to the triplet loss. Herein as well, the quadruplet loss function encourages the network to maximize the difference between dissimilar images and reduce the distance between the similar images. The main low level details are in the mathematical function of this particular loss function. Once the Siamese network has been trained using this complete architecture, then we may isolate this network and use it to generate embeddings of the different given input images. These embeddings then can be used for data visualization or the comparison task that we have been doing all along. Alright, so this is it for the technical discussion related to Siamese networks. Now let us have a brief look at the code. All right, so now let us have a brief look at the code and the data set that we have used. The link to this code notebook and the data set that we are using will be present in the description box below. Okay, so the data set that we are working with is the Olivetti data set. Olivetti is a face images data set that has 10 images for 40 different people. This data set is very similar to what we would be presented when we want to build our own facial recognition system. These are some of the positive image examples that we can see. Each row over here represents the image of the same person. These are some of the negative example images. Each of the row contain images of two different people. This data set is quite organized and all the face images are cropped to a particular dimension. This is the data set that we are going to use. Now let us discuss the code that is present in this notebook. Towards the start, we are importing the different libraries. We are going to be using TensorFlow to build our network architecture. Then we are writing certain utility functions that is used to generate image pairs. As we discussed before, in order to train the Siamese network, we need to provide images in pairs. And that is exactly what we are doing with this generate image pairs function. This function is going to generate the image pairs and also the labels that tell whether the two images are similar to each other or dissimilar to each other. Then we are preparing the data and loading them as a NumPy array. And finally, shuffling the different data examples. In the next section, we have the visualization functions that can be used to visualize the data set that we had a look before. In this section, we are defining the network architecture. The network architecture is built according to what we have discussed. First, we are going to have a network which will create the embedding vectors for us. Then we are going to have a difference layer that is going to calculate the difference. And then we are going to train this complete system. For the embedding network, a custom convolution neural network has been used. This network has been derived from a research paper. The link to that paper would be present in the description box below. In the embedding network, we have three convolution blocks. These convolution blocks contain convolution layers, which are followed by max pooling layers. And we are also adding a dropout to prevent any overfitting. Finally, we flatten all the feature maps. Then we have fully connected layers towards the end of the network. Our embedding vector is going to have a dimension of 1024. In this section over here, we are defining the distance layer. Then we are defining the complete architecture of the Siamese network. We are passing the anchor image and the positive or negative example image through the embedding network. And then we pass those two inputs through the distance layer. Finally, the output is a single value that has been passed through a sigmoid activation function. In this section, we are training the Siamese network using the binary cross entropy loss. 
This is the training graph of the same network. We can see the increasing training accuracy in green and the increasing validation accuracy in red. After training, we are going to test the network. For the first test, we are going to compare this input image with these five images. As we can see, this image and the first image over here are of the same person. Hence, we should expect a higher similarity score for these two images. We create image pairs of this image with these five images and then pass it through the Siamese network. Finally, we print the similarity score that we have. And as expected, the first similarity score is the highest among all the five scores. Then for the second test, we have this input image and we are going to compare this input image with these five images. As we can see, this input image is of the same person that is present in this second image. Once again, we create the different image pairs and pass it through the Siamese network. Finally, we can see the score and the score says that the input image is similar to the second image. And this is the complete discussion of Siamese network applied on Olivetti dataset. All right. So this is it for this video. If you like the video, press the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos. And thank you for watching. Bye.